Now let me tell you something about spirits. Spirits are not freelancers. They are not freelancers. For a spirit to yield you its power, for a spirit to yield you its favor, you have to enter into some kind of contract that also benefits the interest of the spirit. Someone say the interest of the spirit. Yes, interest. A lot of people exchange their souls for the powers of devils with the promise that I and my family will be your perpetual possession. And anytime you want to do anything, my family would be the tool through which or with which you will do whatever you want to do. You see? So they become servants to these demonic entities. And these demonic entities lend these people their powers. Whenever you see someone operating with a demonic power, that power does not originally come from him. It's a borrowed power on the altar of, of a contract. That is where that power comes from. So as long as he keeps the terms and condition for the consecration onto that spirit, he would keep on enjoying the power of that spirit. And he would only be subdued by a power greater than the spirit whose power he is using. Do you understand? Yes. And that's how these contracts work. If this kind of contract is not established and a spirit still exercises dominion over someone is now called oppression do you understand it's no longer a contract for interest it's now an oppression so without any benefit to this person this spirit exercises dominion on them because of their ignorance because they left themselves open because of their lifestyle that invites the spirit into their lives they are now oppressed by those spirits so in the same way, God also cut a contract with the children of Israel. A contract by blood. There were promises in that contract and there were warnings if that contract were broken. Warnings of punishments, exiles, terrible infirmities, sword, all kinds of stuff. And when they agreed to that contract, God became their king. They became a nation separated unto God because God had never entered into such contract with anyone any nation on earth except the nation of Israel. Do you understand? Yes. So now, as the people increase and as sons and daughters are born to them and generations begin to roll by, it is normal for a generation that will not have respect unto the covenant to rise. Do you understand me? They say, well, these things are fathers that did it. We don't have time for it. If you read about script, if you read scriptures, you will know that foundational battles actually exist. The fact that you don't know it does not nullify it. As long as you are born a Jew, because your fathers entered that covenant, you are implicated by that covenant. You can't say, Oh, we will not have respect unto the covenant. That generation will always rise. But what will happen is that. God will send his own messengers, who are the prophets, to remind the people of their covenant with God. And now because this generation would not have respect unto the covenant, they will not have respect unto who? The messengers. So if you want to see the way a generation treats their God, look at the way they treat the messengers of that God. If a generation honors God, they will honor his messengers. You can't keep praying for Nigeria, prophetess, and expect God to change Nigeria when the country itself does not honor the God of the Christians. God does not move that way, if you know how he moves. He will protect his own. He will build Goshen for them. Why does he move that way? Do you know what it means to summon God to a nation? The throne has to be yielded to God. For God to say, okay, this is now my domain. When you will know Nigeria is for God is when a Holy Spirit-filled Christian becomes the ruler. Because only that man can covenant the seed. Do you know how many covenants that exist on that seat now? Covenants that even Christians, so-called Christians, entered with devils on the seat of Nigeria. 
Are we together? Yes.